we're going to actually start doing a couple of problems uh, to kind of bring together all this strain gauge and circuits and Wheatstone bridge uh, kind of ideas and put it all into one. So uh, let's go ahead and start with this first problem. So it says, I'm bending a, let me get my drawing. I'm bending a steel cantilever beam. Whoops. Okay. Let's go ahead and erase that right here. So I'm going to be bending a steel cantilever beam. Full Wheatstone bridge configuration, the standard. So again, standard configuration, one, two, three, four. So we have a strain gauge here, strain gauge here. Full configurations means we have all four in here. Nominal resistances are all 200 uh, ohms. So we need to make sure that that's the case because otherwise we can't use kind of um, these theories of at balance. So we know our expression for how we write uh, basically that change in output voltage, V not, but your VI, your excitation voltage equals gauge factor over four times strain in one, minus strain in two, minus strain in three, plus the strain in the fourth arm. So again, that's kind of our fundamental expression of how we relate the change in voltage to our change, or what it was, what is our strain values here. Um, it also says um, basically a steel cantilever beam. So we know from our strain gauge lab um, the expression for the strain in, in a cantilever beam. So the strain is just going to be six times P, your load, times D, distance, we'll uh, talk about that in a second, Young's modulus, E, and then base times height. So let's keep reading. So the bridge is powered, um, nominal resistances are this, the gauge factor is 3.7, so F equals 3.7. The bridge is powered by a 6 volt source, so V sub I equals 6 volts. Uh, so that is our initial, um, our initial voltage, our excitation voltage. I apply a 300 Newton force, so our P, our load, is um, 300 Newtons. D is the distance from uh, basically where the center of the strain gauge is to where the load is applied, so that is D. So um, I apply a 300 Newton force at the very end of a seven inch long beam. So the total length of this beam, L, L equals seven inches, which we need to multiply this by 0 0.02, 0 0.0254 because that's, um, that will convert us to meters. Um, the strain gauges are located approximately one inch from the wall support. So this is one inch. So D equals, by you know, math, <laughs> six inches times 0 0.0254 meters per inch. So those cancel, and you have there. Um, the beam is a half inch wide. So our base, uh, excuse me, this should be height squared. Let's read that. Our base is equal to, it says half inch wide, so 0 0.5 times 0 0.0254. And our, uh, and a quarter inch thick. So our height is equal to 0 0.25 times 0 0.0254. So what is the output voltage? So we're kind of on our way here, right? We know this, we know this, we know this. What is E? So we are dealing with a steel cantilever beam. So you can use the approximation that your Young's modulus for metals is about 100 GPA. But I know for steel that the Young's modulus of steel is approximately 200 GPA. But again, either answer, you're going to uh, have it right. What is our Poisson's ratio in case we need it for metals? Zero, uh, Poisson's equals 0 0.3 for metals just in case you have that nice reminder from kind of your mechanics section. So now we need to figure out what is the strain or what type of strain are we dealing with uh, in each of these arms. It says here, assume that we are in pure bending. So if we have a cantilever beam, we're going to neglect any kind of um, axial uh, kind of component to this bending. So we're just going to assume pure bending components here. So let's see what happens. Remember this notation. When you have these dashed lines, that means it's on the bottom. So it's on the bottom of this uh, cantilever beam. The, the solid lines are it's on the top. So what's happening, and so let's actually scroll down a little bit here. So let's kind of zoom in uh, on this section right here. So I have my beam, and I have one, four, and then two, and then three. So what's happening here? As I apply my force here and bend, What's happening to my strain gauge one? So this is the initial state. So initial. What's happening after I bend it? Well, 
And again, my wires are kind of always elongated like along this direction. Well, my material is going to kind of bend, right? So my strain gauge is basically going to elongate, right? As it bends, you know, this, you know, again, this material is stretching, right? It's stretching in this direction there. So my wires are expanding. What when we talk about strain, so the, the strain due to bending in this scenario is making my wires elongate. So my, you can see again, there's some elongation, some change in uh, the length of my wires. So if they're elongating, if they're in tension, we're going to call the strain in one. That's going to be positive strain. You could call it, you could call it strain bending. We could call it whatever, you know, if we had an exp expression here for, you know, cantilever or bending, you could kind of just look, put that there. So that's going to be positive. What about on four? As I bend, it's still on the top. Yeah, the wires are going to kind of elongate, right? Because I'm bending the material over here. So it's kind of, you know, you can kind of imagine it's like kind of curving, you know, it's kind of hard. That's a bad drawing. But anyways, the wires are elongating on the top. Now, if my material's on the bottom, what's happening? Are the wires getting elongated or are they compressing? So there you can kind of imagine, you know, you have your beam, right? And so your beam, kind of an exaggerated drawing here. So on the top, you could see that your material is kind of like expanding along with it. But on the bottom, it's kind of being compressed, right? Like you could see, you could tell like that this distance is different than if I had it on the bottom, this distance here. So my one on the bottom, those wires are being compressed. Because again, it's just kind of, it's hard to kind of, you know, visually see this. Uh, if you need an example, I could kind of show some, you know, this is kind of the hard part of the, the remote teaching. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the strain gauge on the bottom is actually being compressed. So if we look at, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, if we look at two, for example, let me draw a dash line here. If we look at two, those wires are being compressed. So it's getting even shorter. So the wires are shortening. So therefore, we are dealing with compression. So that is negative bending here. So again, as you kind of stretch or as you kind of, you know, um, basically, you know, uh, bend this material, if it's on the top, we are elongating. If it's on the bottom, then we are being compressed. If we switch the, the kind of location of the if we pushed it up this way, it'd be the reverse scenario, right? Two and three would be elongating. One and four would be being compressed. So what does that mean? So let's write out our expression uh, once again. So change in V naught, VI over four. What do we know? What's the strain in one? Positive bending. What's the strain in two? Negative bending minus E2. So actually, let's just write out the expression here first. So one plus E2, three plus four. So we know this is positive bending. This is positive bending. This is negative bending. This is negative bending. So we we end up with is delta V naught VI equals F over four times four E bending. Those cancels, we know what this is from our expression above. We know this, we know this, we just need to solve for this. So now I'm going to flip my uh, computer screen really quickly here, and let's solve this now in Mathematica. So we said that strain was equal to Six times P times D divided by my Y of steel times B times H squared. That's my expression for strain. Uh, we could even call it strain bending, but we know that. So my Y of steel equals 200 times 10 to the ninth gigapascal. So 200 gigapascals. My load was 300 newtons. My D was six inches times 0.5. 0254, converting everything to meters. Um, my base was equal to 0 0.5 uh, half an inch times 0 0.0254. And my thickness, my height was 0 0.25 times 0 0.0254. Uh -huh. And my initial VI was equal to 6 volts. And my gauge factor was 3.7. All those, let me suppress that output. Now all I have to do is plug in that my change in voltage, so dv naught, was equal to uh, F times my 
again, uh, looking back there, those fours cancel out. F times my strain times my VI. And that's it. That's your change. In, that's your output voltage in volts. That's all you have to do. There's your answer. So uh, the key thing, again, looking back here, is this expression and figuring out which of these strains are positive, which of these strains are negative, depending on the stress state here. After that, you just kind of read the problem, diagnose what you're given, what you're not given, and solve and plug and chug in for the variables. And remember your mechanics. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's about it. And we will go ahead and do the problem. Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and do the next problem next time. All right. Thanks. Bye.